Exercise 6. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the two-dimensional drawing tools inside SOLIDWORKS as far as bringing up a solid model, importing the front, top, right views, isometric, trimetric, things like that, section views, detail views, and so on. And then we'll add dimensions. So let's begin. First of all, make sure you, you grab the part file. If you go to the vertanu1.web page, you just, uh, in the SOLIDWORKS column, find the exercise 6 part, click on it, and then go ahead and download it. Once it appears at the bottom, just click on it, and it should just open up inside SOLIDWORKS. Okay, now what we're going to do is, we with the file up, and there's a couple ways you could do this. You don't have to bring the file up immediately. If you have it already downloaded, you could just first start the drawing file or however you prefer. But what's nice about this is I could go to File and you will find Make Drawing from Part. And this is just one way. There's a couple different ways of doing this, but this one is a nice way. Okay, so I go select that. Now over here you'll see uh, Standard Sheet Size. And just be aware, you could um, sometimes they don't always appear the way they are on my screen. So you could toggle some of these switches to get different sizes and uh, sheet sizes and things. So in this case, we're just going to go with the A and C landscape, that's standard format, and hit OK. All right, as the drawing opens up here, I'm just going to try and center it a little bit better. There's a couple things you might notice. Um, on the right-hand side, all the views should appear. If they're not, you could click on this little tab. You might have to browse for it or regenerate. Those are other ways you could insert these things. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the front and drag it in. I'm holding the left mouse button down, by the way, as I do that. I release it. And notice you could just move your pointer in the upward fashion, and it will unfold additional views. Now I can move to the right. And I, by the way, I had to click there to get that to drop in. And then I can move to the right and click. And I could go and bring in an isometric just by going at like a 45 degree angle here. So you could do that as well, or else you could pick from the list on the right. So I'm just going to click there, and I'm going to hit the green check mark. I'm going to reposition these. Now, one thing that's uh, useful here, you could scale each view individually by selecting them. And on the left-hand side, there's all the properties for that specific view. Or you can actually scale them um, globally, which down here, the Sheet 1 tab, you could right click on and you'll get options like Edit Sheet Format and Properties. Unfortunately, mine's dropping off the screen so you can't see it, but there's a Properties menu that appears. And if you go to Properties, you could set the sheet scale, like let's say I want it to be one-third. I type in three there and then you could check, select a different sheet format if you want, if you want it larger, smaller, things like that. First angle if you're in Britain, third angle here if you're in the States. Hit OK. You see it automatically scales all the views. And the nice thing about that, it also updates it on your scale down below on your sheet. So it's going to match. OK. Now with that being said, let's click on the um, isometric view. And over on the left, you have display style. Notice you could go with wireframe, hidden lines, or you could even select shaded with edges, which is becoming more popular now to put a shaded view in the upper right corner. So feel free to do that. You could also do the same thing up here with the uh, shaded options. So there's a couple areas you can do that. Most things in SOLIDWORKS have that capability. All right, also another thing that might help out the people in the shop working on this part, sometimes when you see these tangent edges, they show up with a hard edge or an object line. You could actually control select multiple views that you want to transform this and then right click and you will find Tangent Edge with Font or Remove. So you could remove them or add a font. And watch what, the, watch what happens to those hard edges. They turn into a dashed line. Thus, it's a little bit easier. I know from experience, sometimes these would go out to the uh, manufacturing in the back, and people in the shop making these things would be like, what's going on here? I don't understand your print. So that might be helpful. Maybe not. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we want to draw, uh, create a couple additional views here. So I'm going to drag this over. Notice you just grab the borders of the views to drag them. And I'm when I say grab, left mouse button to press. Okay. All right, let's make a section view. Let's zoom up to this region here. Go to section view. And you'll notice you could center it or move it in any location. Um, 
in this over on the left you have the cutting line you want it vertical or in this case horizontal and you just click to drop it and hit the green check and drag this up click to drop that now you have your section view now if you want to flip the direction of the section view you can just double click on the line or there's a flip direction button so either or just double click when you see crosshatch appear on your view it means it needs to be updated the way to update it is hit the little traffic signal the rebuild button up here and it will update it okay moving on to this view if you want to transform these uh, the section lines click on it and here's the area hatch fill you could go ahead and turn off material cross hatch it allows you to modify it there's a whole library of different ones to choose from you could have it solid or cross hatched or even increase or decrease the scale or even adjust the angle hit the green check mark to apply let's bring in a detail view click on the detail view and let's say we want it in this region be careful when you click on a detail view you can snap it to edges and it locks in it's a little challenging to unrelease that so um, try not to get it locked into anything and it makes your life a little bit easier go ahead and click and drag out your circle and you'll see immediately it brings off a uh, a, a detail view which is twice the scale in the tools options menu up at the top here you have the ability to find that and change that if you want um, so it's a different scale or whatever okay as a default I should say anytime you could go over here to the left and change the scale you'll see here there's a whole list of scales so if you wanted it to be one to one you could click on it and now that scale is one to one some other things you have, you have a little library of like you could have it with a leader. Okay, that means that you could drag this little leader out. Or if you click on the circle again over here on the left, you could select connected, some people like that. So it's all up, entirely up to you or the company you work for on what their standards are. Okay, as far as the standards go for the drawing, be aware that the options menu, document properties, you could change or transform it from ANSI to ISO standards at any time or any of the standards. You could even adjust the units, in this case IPS, the decimal places, things like that. All right, let's bring in an auxiliary view. Auxiliary views are right up here. We click on auxiliary view, select an edge. Uh, and actually let me cancel out of there let me hit escape let me pre-select the edge sometimes that's a little bit easier you shouldn't always have to pre-select but uh, SOLIDWORKS is usually pretty good about giving you the option so I'm going to pre-select that edge and unfold the view off of that edge so it's coming off from that perpendicular to that angle and let's move this out of the way be aware that these can be adjusted and moved around if they're in the way or if you want to make them a little smaller things like that Move the notes in a little closer, especially when you're limited with space. And finally, there's also the broken view. If you design things like that are very long or elongated parts, uh, this isn't a good example, but I'm going to show you how to use the tool. Let's say you're designing flagpoles. Um, but in this case, of course, we don't have it. You go to the break view, you click in the view, you break it where you want it, and it truncates it, shrinks it down. This, if you dimension that from end to end, it will still come out to the proper dimension. It just enables you to fit things on the screen a little bit better. Notice there's a small library of uh, options, curve, cut, zigzag, so on and so forth. And uh, just hit escape. If you want to get rid of it, you can just click on it, hit delete, and break, delete that line. Okay. <clears throat> So moving on now, uh, there are other options. Again, here, if you want to hide edges, you could click on an edge, and you have the ability to hide or show. Okay, to remove things that way. Again, remember the little trick, tangent edge with font. Or if you wanted this to go with wire, um, I should say hidden lines visible, things like that, all there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at dimensions. Now that's on the annotations tab. So you can add smart dimensions on anything. You just click on edges and points and things like that. And it brings up the dimension as you might want to see it. Um, if you want to rotate these, this is a good time to show you. You could go to the um, custom text position here, check that little box, and have it flipped around like that. You could click the arrowheads and things um, to enable them to fit a little bit better or however you want to modify those. Okay, that's one way of doing it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time adding those dimensions because um, 
that's you've been I'm sure you've become been a, uh, become accustomed to seeing that on a regular basis so there's model items which I like you click on this and you go ahead and you just say I want to have or select the marked drawings or not marked for drawings whole positions whole callouts things like that and if there's any annotations already in there you could have those show up or surfaces that might be hidden otherwise you can turn those on and you just select the view uh, or I should say over here you have selected feature or entire model Selected feature is a little bit nicer because you can click on a surface and it doesn't overwhelm you with dimensions. It just gives you the ones for that specific feature. It lets you pick through what you want, what you don't want. Now you do have the ability to go over here to hide show and there's um, different tools to show or hide things like that. Um, you can actually delete these two or if you wanted to change things, go to the options menu, document properties, go to Let's go to dimensions here. Uh, if you go to dimensions, go to the font. Let's say you wanted a different font for the entire document. You could go in here, we'll go with italicized. Uh, we could select points or units. If I go with a much smaller 0.06, you'll notice a big difference. Now look at the dimensions right now. Let's go ahead and, oh, one other thing. Let's go to units and set it to three decimal places. Hit OK, watch as they all update. They fit a lot better now. Okay, if you don't want a dimension, you can just click on it, hit delete. It's still in there. You could call it up again. There's a hide and show option as well. If you don't want to see certain dimensions and yet you want to bring them back, a lot of nice little features in here. Some of these dimensions don't belong. Like maybe the 17 inch, uh, 17 degree dimension might be better suited in this view up here. All you do is you hold the shift key down, grab it with your left mouse button, drag it to the center of the part, and you'll see. It will drop it in there so we we're able to move it and you could grab the extension lines and things like that if you like okay um this one too the 0.125 shift and drag oops unfortunately i had that selected so let me get out of there uh, let me undo that because i just hit the undo switch if you accidentally move something where you don't want it okay shift and drag if you hold the control key it will make a duplicate copy and you should know that that goes against uh, rules of drafting so you don't want duplicate dimensions typically but if you need to know that the control key instead of the shift key will work for you over here with these dimensions like this notice you could click on them and flip them around if you need to um, if you're unable to get it in the corner that you wanted to get it into let me move some of these out of the way for a second here you could adjust the length here let's say um, this is of course we don't want it like this but let's just um, when you click on it over here on the left, you'll see dimension to inside of arc, and then you could flip that. And so you could do a lot of neat things like that if you want to customize the way a dimension sits, but there are some automatic settings which will pop it back out from time to time. All right, these dimensions again over here, these should probably go up above. So I'm gonna control select the group, hold shift, drag them to the center, release them. Now they all drag as a, uh, they'll move together. Now over here on the left to leaders, you could select make into a diameter. Oh, click on that leader. Oh, actually, um, you want to right click. Sorry. And then you display options and display as diameter. Now you'll get what you're typically accustomed to. Let's see if we could do multiple ones. Right, select them, con holding control, display, display as diameter. And yes, you can. And so you could move these around. Another really nice tool in here that you have the ability, remember you can delete these if you want. Um, the whole wizard, or the whole tool, when you select whole call out, select the outermost diameter if that's what you're looking to get. And let's, uh, let's see, you're gonna need a lot of space. Let's get it up here. So let's select that edge and look at that. The entire note appears for all the properties, the countersink, the counter bore depth, uh, the angle of the countersink, all that, all those details, which are very critical, saves a lot of time. <clears throat> okay, moving along, let's say we want to edit this. Uh, right click anywhere on the screen other than a part file and go to edit sheet format. Notice it lifts off the imaginary glass with our drawing on it uh, and allows us to change this so we could double click on this and we could change this to a smaller font perhaps we could change the color of the font whatever you want to do uh, it's really 
uh, very nice. And you could type in additional notes in here to protect them. Otherwise, you could just drop the notes on the other sheet. Also, let's say you want to change colors. Right click up here and go to sheet, uh, let's see here, uh, line format. Line format appears in the lower left corner. You could right click on edges. Oh, in this case, the whole thing is one continuous one, which makes it nice and easy. Um, oops, let's select that again. Maybe we're not going to have it as easy as I thought. Um, you could select any line, and with the line format tool, you could change the line color. So this appears, and so let's say we want that line red, and if you want to thicken it, so you could change line colors, all that fun stuff. Okay, right click in the center of the screen or hit this little button in the upper right corner to exit out. So in this case, I want to edit the sheet, brings back my drawing. All right, and so again, be aware at any time you can move these things around and adjust them. And then you can save it off. You could also save it off as an eDrawing or DXF or DWG just by going to File, Save As. Notice that you have the ability to select whatever you'd like. Okay, and that concludes Exercise 6.